Oh, right now I am in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where in July of 1863, one of the largest and most violent battles of the Civil War was fought. And the field where I'm standing right now is the site where on day three of the battle, uh, the, the famous Pickett's Charge took place, where the Army of Northern Virginia was trying to break the center of the Union line. But in doing some of these American artifact videos, uh, at, you know, we talk about some of the World War II artifacts that are on display at the Gettysburg Museum of History. And I've had people ask, what does Gettysburg have to do with World War II? Uh, I even had one guy who left a comment and he said, uh, Gettysburg is uh, sacred, hallowed ground. There shouldn't be anything in the town that, that doesn't directly deal with the Civil War battle that took place there. Well, that old boy would probably evacuate his bowels if he found out that during World War II, this sacred, hallowed ground was the site of a German POW camp. Yes, during World War II, the US government set up a POW camp right here on the fields of Pickett's Charge. During World War I, it was a tank training ground. So there were POW camps that were set up all over the United States. So today, uh, we're gonna take a look at some of the artifacts from those camps right at the Gettysburg Museum of History. A lot of times when people come in the museum they say you know what does Gettysburg have to do with World War II and actually Gettysburg has a lot of ties to World War II. Um, number one we're in the sister city of St. Mary Gleason, in Nor Normandy, France. We're, we're the home of uh, General Eisenhower who commanded the Allied forces in Europe and uh, we're also the home to a German POW camp. A lot of people don't know that. They, they repurposed the battlefield temporarily during World War II as a, to house German prisoners of war that were brought over here. And uh, I'm going to show you some interesting prisoner of war items. And um, you know, I have a couple hats here. here here's one from, this is a, a German M43 cap. And when they became POWs and they were being held, they were, they were not, in most cases, not allowed to use their insignia. So this hat is stripped of its eagle that would be right there in the swastika. And this POW put some, added some uh, embroidery there. And you see that sometimes on, on this kind of, these kind of hats. This is, this is a really interesting M43 hat. The, the, this is from an Africa Corps soldier and it's very well worn and there's, there's multiple repairs there. And he's trying to recreate a Jaeger badge there. And then this is some kind of a, um, a crest from probably a district he lived in in Germany. Um, and again, the, the, the insignia that would be here is gone. But if you look at the inside, you know, you, you can see numerous repairs. The orange liner that, that's normally seen in an Africa Corps hat is almost gone. He also put a leather band in here. Now, that, that, that's, that was added. Um, and his name is in there and a pretty fascinating piece. He also created this little booklet with some really interesting paintings in there, some watercolors. And here's the first one, delousing. And the glue has come loose from here, but I wanted to make sure I kept it in the book. Second one is showing a chow line there, getting some food. Pretty good artwork. Um, here is one where they're lining up to get things repaired. There's a guy with boots, and uh, must be the tailor at the at the camp. And here's one where they're emptying the honey buckets from the latrines into a truck, and this guy's holding his nose. Pretty, pretty interesting artwork from camp life. And that's the last one. Now, how would this and this arrive here? Well, this POW like many POWs, traded it to a camp guard, maybe for cigarettes, maybe for favors, whatever. And that's why you see a lot of this kind of stuff. It, it seems like the hats were, were, a, were a reoccurring theme. Um, this, this is another one that, this hat was made out of a flour sack. You know, when their stuff wore out, they just started making things. 
Now, as I said, that they weren't supposed to have the uh, eagle or the swastika. Um, so my theory on this, this looks like it's unworn pretty much. I think whoever was creating these hats out of flour sacks at the camp traded one to one of the guards and of course the guard would want that symbol on there. He, the, the, the prisoner wouldn't be allowed to wear that symbol but if a guard was getting one as a souvenir he would want that, meaning a prison guard. Um, and another thing that they would make are, are these carved items. Now these two here surfaced locally so we theorize they came from possibly Gettysburg or maybe one of the other nearby camps. Like they carved an infantry assault badge here and a wound badge here. And of course this was this was made to be traded or sold to prisoner the prisoner guards so they have the swastika on there. Here's another one. Remembrance of the prisoner of war camp. And this came out of uh, one of the camps in Alabama. It has a painting or carved carving painting of the guard tower there. It's just a little dish. Um, interesting. And so again these these prisoners would trade these trinkets and sometimes their hats maybe when they were leaving. This this I theorize was probably traded as he was leaving when they finally got to go home uh, because of, because of the, the wear in, in that hat. And once in a while a prisoner would escape. This is a FBI wanted poster, Federal Bureau of Investigation. It has the, the prisoner's information, his fingerprints. Of course, all prisoners were fingerprinted and photographed. And um, has, has the circumstance of his uh, escape here. Pretty interesting. Here are a few other select items uh, from these German POWs. Now, the, the German POWs were allowed to receive Red Cross packages. Uh, so here, like we have uh, some some soap. Um, here we have uh, some some tobacco for smoking. Okay, so here's some items for for cigarettes. Here's a a little haversack that was recovered from one of these POWs. And if you look, you can see. You know, there's a, a repair on the back and of course they could also receive and send mail uh, to and from Germany so here is one that went to a camp in Alabama uh, so this came out of, of Germany and then this one right here is exceptionally interesting to me so if you look you know here it says German prisoner of war right here and if we open it up by the way as you can see I'm not wearing gloves that is an acceptable practice whenever handling paper items but if we open this up there are a few interesting things there's a sensor mark right here so apparently this guy wrote something um, his, his name was Werner Kiel uh, apparently he, he wrote something that was a, a little bit uh, too confidential so so it had to be censored but something else that I found interesting about this letter is that it was sent in the latter part of 1944 and if you look at the address it was being sent to Dresden uh, little did this man know or uh, Hertha Kiel who he was sending it to that in February of 45 his hometown was going to be completely obliterated in the firebombing of Dresden These are some of the uniforms that were worn by German prisoners in the United States. Now they would come in with their, um, their, their uniform and they would strip the uniform but sometimes those uniforms would wear out and then eventually they would be issued something like this. Um, a lot of times they would be just a repurposed U.S. uniform which is what this is and they would always paint PW on there to identify them as a prisoner. This is another early work type garment that um, was repurposed as a PW, prisoner of war, uniform. We have a photograph here showing some German prisoners and they have similar, the PW symbols on these uniforms. 
and it'll say it on the front and the back. I'll turn this around, or they'll have it on the sleeve. Um, and like you, like I said, this is a just a repurposed U.S. four pocket uniform, and this one has it on the front, the PW painted on there. And uh, I want to say that we're really actively looking for Gettysburg prisoner of war items. So if you are in Germany and you had a relative that that was uh, here at Gettysburg and you have any letters or anything that you would be interested in donating please email us info at Gettysburg Museum of History dot com or any kind of you know the, any kind of Gettysburg related items um, you know I, I've been looking for this stuff for years and there's really not that much uh, tangible stuff from the Gettysburg uh, prisoner of war camp. Um, so if you have some of the, 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 the inmate made artwork or any of that kind of stuff, pl please contact us. We, we would be very grateful to get those items. Uniforms from the uh, prisoners of war camp.